Well, it looks like the big banks have maybe had their day. <laughs> What's happening on the internet? Really, just get rid of those guys. You don't charge outrageous interest rates when you want money, and give you no interest <laughs> when you want to, you know, uh, make interest on your money. So now these peer-to-peer -peer lending companies, man, are just blossoming. Look, this one just went public or publicly traded uh, company now, you know, and it's called Lending Club. You know, and the other big one is Prosper. And what they're doing is taking average individuals that want to lend money to people, you know, at lower interest rates, they get more money than they would at a bank. You know, these people are making like 12% or more on their money, you know, lending to individuals who want to pay high interest credit card debt, get rid of that, at low interest rates. That's lower than a bank or anywhere else you could get. So you know this is going to grow. And it's also business loans too now. So the big ones, you got to look into this, is Prosper, P-R-O-S-P-E-R.com. Uh, and the other one is LendingClub.com. And there's some others that you want to know, smaller ones. Uh, they're called Vouch. V-O-U-C-H and circle back lending. <laughs> and this is where it's at. Why pay these bureaucrats in New York <laughs> all this money <laughs> and they don't know you? You get local people giving you money you know, and lend it because you'll pay it back. You're a good risk, but you know somebody looking at you on a computer doesn't care. And that's what's so neat about this peer-to-peer -peer lending. And this uh, uh, the, the, the lending club folks, they're worth like five or six billion dollars already you know and that's their market value i mean it's incredible what's happening so they're taking off the fat cats are trying to figure out how to get into that <laughs> but more importantly it's becoming better for the consumer you're getting a higher interest on your money you're getting a lower interest on borrowing money all because of the internet <laughs> Do you know you can have $100,000 sitting in the bank, all yours, and still get money that's set aside for the needy from the government, you know, like in government grants for, for low-income people? Right. I mean, who would ever thought that? You know, that's why the thing about government money is that we all have these preconceived notions about what it is, how you get it, who's eligible, who's not. See, only 12% of this money goes to the poor. And not only that, gosh, even if you're poor, what's poor? You know, $100,000 in the bank is poor. You know? and, and this is actually new legislation that's about to pass on Capitol Hill. And it's really set aside for people with disabilities to get uh, benefits from the government and they could have up to $100,000 in the bank. Uh, so, you know, the most important thing, forget about your preconceived notions of who gets money from the government and why. Yeah. <laughs> and, and really, you know, because 12, only 12% 12 goes to the poor, that means, you know, what do you have, 88% of the money goes to anybody, any incomes, you know, uh, kind of thing. And so that's why you just have to investigate. That's the key to all this stuff. Nobody knows the answer. They'll say, you know, oh, this is only for poor people. So you think all the money for poor? No, it's not. So that may be true one place, but it's not true everywhere else. So if you're trying to find out a good place to start for finding if there's money for you to have some problem, just call 211. That's a government hotline that tells you about government programs really right in your area. So these are local pro people that know about local money too, whether it's disability or you got to put a roof on your house or you want to go get an education or start a business, that's a great place to start. Don't give me money. Go there first. Hey, there's new laws and grants to help them make it easier for you to buy a home. That's right. Remember that crisis? You know, what is it like since 2008 or something now when, you know, before then it was so easy to buy a home, no money down, everybody's getting in and all this kind of stuff that you got screwed with afterwards. And then it became like 20% down payments and everything. Who the hell could buy a house now? Well, now the government's making it so that you only need 3% down to buy a house. And remember that it's... Um, uh, there's local money at your state and local county and things like that to help you with down closing, uh, yeah, down payment costs and closing costs. You know, so that kind of money, that's grant money to help people buy houses. And to find that out, you could call 211 and ask for your housing authority, your state 
Housing Authority. That's how to find it anywhere it is. And that 211 is a hotline. Remember that these, this is an uh, organization that provides free information on programs, government and otherwise, that from nonprofit organizations and government offices that that help you with things like this. So call that number, <laughs> even if you don't want a house, because you probably got some other kind of problems. Well, here's another case where you can get a better, faster, cheaper from the government than you can from some business. <laughs> That's right. Actually, it's a new CIA interrogation report that came out from the Senate committee, uh, the committee on you know, the U.S. Senate. And what's happened now, you know, entrepreneurs <laughs> like me are grabbing this and charging people for it. You know, like if you go on, on uh, Amazon.com now, you can get a copy for $9.44. Or there's another copy there for $2.99. Or actually, there's some publisher coming out soon for another copy cost sixteen dollars and ninety five cents. Or you could go to this website, intelligence.senate.gov, <laughs> and you get it for free. You download it right there. There's a big sign on the <laughs> the front page of the uh, website, and you just. Click there, you'll see it all. You can, there's a 500 page report and all the comments from the senators of both sides of the aisle. So what could be better than that? <laughs> but they don't advertise, right? Amazon, you know, is advertising the hell out of it and things like that. And actually my first New York Times bestseller was a book I got from the government printing office. I got it, copied it, sent it to New York. They took six, nine months to edit it and then it came out, but you could go to the government <laughs> when I was on TV selling it and you could got a better, faster <laughs> and more up to date than what I was selling. So isn't Uncle Sam great? Okay, now here's a big reason why you should be looking at the government's grant they give out to help to give, you know, buy medical insurance. Here's why. You know, look at the data just came out from uh, uh, the Consumer Finance uh, Organization uh, that, you know, the new agency by the government, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Well, they have a report that shows one out of five Americans uh, have blemishes on their credit report because of health care bills. That's 43 Americans now have bad credit reports because of health care bills. Now listen to this. Uh, medical debts make up half the collection items on credit reports. Though the, people, the reason people are calling people to pay their bills, half of those reasons, 50% of that is because of medical bills. So you know, these medical bills are screwing everybody over because you don't know what the heck they are. Nobody knows. The, the insurance companies don't even know. You, you get sick, you don't even know what you're paying for or should pay for or not pay for and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> That's one of the reasons to get this coverage from a so-called Obamacare care as they call it, uh, healthcare.gov, and, and see, you can make them up to $90,000 and get covered, you know, and, and that's why you get hit with stuff like this, that it's going to ruin your life forever, you know, who cares about the credit report, but you're still going to be in debt, it could be for hundreds of thousands of dollars or even thousands of dollars. Now, what, what the consumer people are doing now is, is having hearings, you know, to stop what's going on with the credit card company. So they have a report, you could go to... Uh, um, uh, <laughs> why do I forget? Consumerfinance.gov. Okay. And, and you could see the report there and it gives you tips how to deal with medical bills and, and all those kinds of things. And, and that's important to do it and learn the system. And your state has a health insurance plan. Uh, you might as well start finding out about it if you don't know it now. And don't forget, <clears throat> if you're low income, you don't pay anything. The lower income you have, the less you pay. I just helped a friend of mine uh, get on the system, and she only pays like fifty dollars a month now for her coverage, and she got complete coverage. So you know, having a nightmare, <laughs> or plus worrying about how you're going to pay for something when you have to go into uh, the hospital for something, and this is peace of mind. I mean, we shouldn't have this thing, but I think it's still the best around, and um, you got to look into it.
Now the internet has created a whole new world of getting jobs and making extra money and even starting a whole new careers. Yep. And, and because jobs aren't going nowhere, We're, we we haven't even you know created enough jobs since the last recession. Actually, here's some data uh, out there now about jobs and, and what's happened since the last recession. You know, back in like 2008 when that started, well, we lost almost seven million jobs. Okay, so that's in 2008. So now this is 2014. So now it's seven years and we barely made those seven million jobs back. You know how businesses create new jobs and everything. So we're just almost even, but we're not even. We're only halfway there because in those seven years, the population has increased. So the number of people looking for jobs is an additional seven millions. So it's going to take us almost four more years to create the number of jobs we need to fill how many were lost in the last recession. So that we're back to square one. So <laughs> that's why everybody's talking about the recession over. That may be true, but not for people looking for jobs. Yep. And what's happening too is that people <laughs> are just giving up. I mean, look at this chart from the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. You know, the number of people that have just given up looking for work altogether is at its lowest point since like uh, 1978 or somewhere like that. And you see that graph that, you know, like back in after the Second World War, it was back about 60 percent. And then it went up to, you know, almost 70, 68, 70 percent. And now we're down about 62 percent. It's been going down for 15 years, it looks like. Even more than that, 20 years, 25 years, you yeah. know. And that's because how many jobs, but jobs are out there, but people look in the wrong places. You know, what happens is that, you know, particularly if you're over 25 or 30, you're thinking, you know, classified ads. When was the last time you saw classified ads jobs? You know? uh, or employment agencies. You know, when was the last time, you know, that is, there's a whole new world out there of how to get jobs. And most of all of it is around the internet and the internet actually, you know, you don't have to pay anybody. You know, anybody who's out there saying, oh, just, you know, sign up here and pay us $300 or $1,000 or all this kind of, no, you don't have to do any of that. Anybody asking for that money for you to get a job, just run away, run away as fast as you can <laughs> because there's just too many places out there where to get jobs. And these are either full-time, part-time. What's also happening now, people, you know, our average income is really going down. The family income, you know, it, it's really minus. We're working more hours and making less money. And so people are even getting second jobs. More people have second jobs now probably than ever before, you know. So that's available too. All those things are online, you know, and you have to learn how to use their service. So here's 33 websites that you can go to to get cool jobs, not so cool jobs. Because see, the new jobs, you don't have to dress up and go to the office to a lot of these things. You know, you can be in your underwear at home and making money, you know. So it's a lot more flexible. You can work when you want to work. You're not overseen by some boss and have to be there all the time. So there's so many jobs, you don't, you don't have that control. People don't have, you know, bosses don't have that kind of control over you anymore. It's just more flexible work schedules and where and how and what you wear. and who. People don't even see you and hire you and send you money. It's terrific, but it's a new way to learn. So like I say, if you're 25, 30 years or under, you probably know about these things. You over that, you don't. But that's where it's happening. So you got to learn about those. And there's so many popping up all the time. I mean, these jobs, you know, that are they're really job banks. I mean, they're like clearing houses for jobs. What the, uh, the Internet has done is cut out the middleman. So if somebody needs work done, like somebody who needs, oh gosh, I need somebody to clean out my basement. Well, they don't go to put a sign in the, you know, the store anymore or the, the supermarket or whatever they're looking for. No, they go on one of these websites, see, and it's free to them to do that. It's free for you to get the job. See, and that's what's neat. Now, here's some of the websites we're going to go through. Uh, the first one that's pretty popular and doing these uh, little odd jobs that people get. And you can make good money, man, you know, doing this stuff. You know, if you're making, you know, 10, 15 bucks an hour or something like that, what the heck? That's not bad money. It beats doing nothing or even a part-time job, you know. Uh, so it's called TaskRabbit, T-A-S-K-R-A-B-I-T. 
you know, dot com. And they have a list. You sign up there. The people who are offering the job sign up there. So it's all a clearinghouse and there's nobody taking, they take a small little percent. You know, uh, you don't even notice it, but, but they handle all the marketing. You know, and that's what's neat. So a as a business, if you're looking for work, you don't have to do the marketing. You don't have to go knocking on doors. It's all there. It's all there in one spot. That's what's so neat about it, you know, uh, that people are all rushing there looking for people and you could rush there looking for work, you know. And there's another one there called Gig Walk, G-I-G, -G. like, you know, let's do a gig, like dancing a jig. <laughs> so uh, a Gig Walk, uh, that's not a jig, I guess it's a gig, but a Gig Walk. And what happens there, people, particularly, <laughs> and this is like for uh, secret shoppers, you know, you heard about those kind of jobs and, and people who, who who sell those kind of jobs on the internet, I'm charging money for you to get those kind of, no, you go to Gigwalk, there are people all over a headquarters, they want to know what the store down the street is, how their sign is. So they pay you 40 bucks or whatever to go down and check that out for them, you know? And that's not a bad couple hours of work for something like that. So that's Gigwalk, G-I-G-W-A-L-K. Now here's another neat one called, <laughs> uh, it's called uh, Mechanical Turk. Mechanical Turk. And that's part of Amazon. You know, the big bookstore and all that stuff they're selling on the internet now. Well, they have a clearinghouse for people who need people like to do things on the internet for people. Hey, I need people like to look at 15 sites and say whether they're red or green or something like that. And you make a but <laughs> some money doing that at home. You never see the boss. You never do anything. You do what you want. You plug in. Hey, okay, what kind of jobs are available today? How much they're paying? How much does it normally cost? Okay, I'll do that. I got nothing better to do. <laughs> and I'll make some money just clicking on the internet. You know? <laughs> and anybody can do it. Mechanical Turk. And actually, I was reading somewhere. I forget. That, that's sort of a, uh, from something that happened 20 years ago. or I mean, I mean 200 years ago, where somebody brought this, uh, like a, a robot, you know, Know, at the time they said it was a robot and they called it mechanical Turk or something like that that would do things for you and it was really a guy inside or something like that it was way before all these things so that's mechanical Turk content just Google that it's part of Amazon uh, and you'll find it so it's uh, Amazon mechanical Turk and how to get and it's also see for people like well, entrepreneurs I need somebody to do something and then and, and, and it's no commitment so you don't have to hire somebody and give them <laughs> benefit Fits and all this kind of stuff. That's just needed by the end. So it, it's much more flexible. And that's all we're all we're going to live in more and more. Nobody offers benefits anymore except the government job, you know, <laughs> and who knows how long that's going to take. So that's why you have to learn this system about it. You know, uh, being an independent person and finding out where these jobs are and opportunities are, whether it's a full time or just filling in for something or just make some extra money. I mean, it's nice. It beats watching some stupid TV thing, right? Uh, but also like mechanical terms, guru com g u r u dot com i use that a lot looking for people all kind of expertise you know you need somebody to write something you need somebody to research you need somebody to do anything you need an engineer you, you need uh uh you know a publicity expert or something you have some kind of skill or whatever that you could share with somebody you just put it on go there and just start looking at all the things that are on them. i mean they have categories that in the hundreds Hundreds of different kind of categories. You need somebody to do a website or something like that because you know you're you're fooling around yourself and you can't do it. Well, they have people there who'll do it for next to nothing. You know that kind of thing. Or you want to start learning how to do it. You know, so you could be one of those people who do the things and make extra money on the side. Now that's very big and very popular. And another one just like that is E Lance, uh, E and then L A N C E. -E. It's very popular. And look at these sites because they're very important in our society now. This is where people are, are getting you know, talent and you get talent all over the world. So if you're in America, you, you, know, uh, you, sh you have to know about these things because you're competing with people that are on there from other countries. So you want to know about it. How is it for you? How is it, you know, how are you going to do it? Put something on there to see. It costs nothing. It costs nothing. Put your resume on there. Hey, I do these five things for anybody. You know, uh, <laughs> you want to consult, you can consult through, you know, uh, through the internet and writing emails back or Skyping with somebody. Somebody. I mean, I, I deal with people all over the world through uh, organizations like this that I find them to help. So this is, if you're looking for a job or anything, you know, your local 
community won't have that for you, but it may be something on the web and you have to look at it. The other one is Freelancer, F-R-E-E-L-A-N-C-E-R.com. And here's a fun one, Fiverr. I use this one a lot. Number one for myself, hey, you want to test out something like you have an idea for something. You're a photographer, you know, and you say you can take pictures or edit pictures or something like that. You can say, hey, I'll, I'll do a test job for you for $5. See, on this thing is $5 for everything. <laughs> Everything is fine. Like right now, I'm looking for new graphic artists to do some cartoons for a new website we're doing. And I go on there and I find five people. Give me $5 a piece and see what they're doing or 10 people. But it's a way to get customers. See, if you have a talent like that, that you could sell, you go to Fiverr. Because see, <clears throat> thing, no matter how good your, your talent is or your product or anything you have, if you don't have customers, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> and see what's great about these sites they have customers they have people going to the sites all the time <laughs> and that's what you want you have your know, it's a market so it's like going down to the town square you know where all the people come for shopping you know so if you had a uh you know, you're selling something at a flea market. You can't sell it at home. You got to go down to the flea market to sell it. So that's what these are like now. It's on the internet. You don't even have to get out of the house. You know, and now you're in the flea market and you're presenting your product, presenting your ideas or whatever. Because see, millions of people are coming to these sites all the time. So why should you go fishing when they did the fishing for you and everybody's lined up with their poles in the water and all you have to do is jump in the water? <laughs> and learn how to do that. Okay, here's another one like Fiverr. <laughs> it's called, actually, I think they're ripping off Fiverr. It's called uh, Fiverr Up. <laughs> See, Fiverr is spelled with two R's, and this is called, uh, spelled with F-I-V-E-R-U-P, Fiverr. -up. And it's the same kind of deal, you know, just another guy getting in on the, uh, you know, the action. But it's another place. I mean, so maybe they have half, they only have a half a million people <laughs> coming to their site. That's pretty good, right? Where else are you going to find it? See, that's what's so neat about all these sites. And here's another one called uh, Gig Bucks. Uh, you know, G-I-G bucks and they start at five dollars and go like to a hundred dollars so you have a service you have an idea or whatever that you could provide for somebody look at these things I mean gig bucks I mean they have all kinds of freelancers that you could get uh, talent they're looking for oh uh, let's see where are they? okay they have graphic artists music and audio maybe you like music you could write little tunes for people photographers programmers silly stuff you know <laughs> you'll you'll do a birthday song for somebody social marketing technology translation services video writing these kinds of things that are out there you just I mean, it costs nothing to try you put it out there you look at the other things doing you look at the people making a lot of money on the hey what are they doing that i could do different so you don't have to hire anybody to try because it costs nothing to you and, and and if you keep it original to what is you're about you'll attract more people that way than, than just copying somebody else verbatim or some sh hot shot thinks they know everything and says do it this way so that that's a way to get jobs you know part-time and you have control you decide if you're going to work three hours a day, 30 hours a day, whatever, what days, you don't work this, you don't, I, you have control of your life. You know, that's what's neat. You get a job somewhere, you know, you got to go there every day and you, you've lost control of your life, right? Because you're <laughs> here, you have control and you decide when you want to do it. So you're like an independent contractor, but making money the way, you know, your way and having more control of your life to do things. So that's what's good about these things. Now, uh, another thing is, is this way to make money peer to peer, you know, peer to peer uh, sharing is what it is. It's a way to make money with stuff you got <laughs> that you don't use all the time. And actually, I just saw a listing of 400 peer to peer sharing sites on that. You know, we're sharing everything. And I'm going to go through some of them now. So stuff you have around the house that you could make money out of that you didn't know that it was worth any value. Like your car. You know, okay. Like here, here, flight car. That's an interesting thing. You could, you know, when you're going to the airport, you could drop your car off at flight car guy. They park it for free. So while you're out of town, you, you don't pay for parking, you know that you, you go to where the airplane, you know, login places or drop off place or, <laughs> and, and they're there to take your car and then they wash it and they rent it out for you. 
somebody who's flying into that city and needs a car, they won't go to Hertz or Avis because this guy's cheaper and it's your car and they give you a lot of money for it. You know? So when you draw, come back in, you fly in town, <laughs> you get your car, they pick you up at the uh, terminal and your car's washed and you got money. <laughs> so who would have thought that you could make money you know, with your car at the airport instead of costing you money. Now here's another thing, relay rides. You know, this is another way you get use on your car sitting in the driveway. Most of us use our car about 20% of the time. It's sitting there doing nada, nothing. Okay, you put it on the website, they, people are looking for a car. Hey, I can get Joe's car for a half a day for 30 bucks or whatever. That's cheaper than anywhere else I get it. Yep. And they do all that. They have an insurance. They do all the hassle. See, that's what's neat about these peer-to-peer -peer websites. They take out all the risk because they, they vet all the people who are going to use the car and you too. And they have insurance. They get, they have the insurance to cover it. So you don't have to have insurance. So that's what I mean. And, and it's a friendly thing. I mean, who wants to, you know, when you drive around with a Hertz, your car, you know, you bring it back all messy because you don't care about Hertz. Hertz doesn't care about you. They just care about your money. So you're going to pay no matter what. But when Joe comes and borrows your car, he cares. You care about Joe. Joe cares about you because what happens, you're going to rate Joe on the site how good he brought the car back. <laughs> so if Joe's messing with your car, he gets a bad review and it's going to be tough for him to use somebody else's car. So that's why I mean the, the self-policing of this peer-to-peer -peer stuff that's going on in our country is going to get rid of so much problems we have in dealing with big bureaucracies because they won't be in charge anymore. You know, they'll be the little guys. The big companies will just be websites. That's all there are. They are as a website. But see, millions of people come to the website looking for a car. See, if you say, hey, your car is available for rent when you're not using it, well, how are you going to organize that? How are you going to find people who want it? You know, but now, for free, you put it on a website, people are looking. People are looking there. See, they're going to that website. So that's what's so neat about these websites. They, they're, 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 you know, the, the village square where everybody's trading ideas and trading help and trading <laughs> whatever they're not using and making money out of it because somebody else, it's worth something to them. So RelayRides.com is one of those. Another one is Get Around. So these are companies that are booming. Like I say, these peer-to-peer -peer websites are growing, you know, like there's 400 of them already, at least, you know, they're the ones that just got <laughs> venture capital money. See, even the sharks, the ones with venture capital are investing in these kind of websites because they think, hey, this is where it's at. Now, one of the ones that I really like is Airbnb. And this is hotel rooms and apartments that people own. You know, they're not Hyatt's or Hilton and stuff like that. I just came back from Shanghai, China and stayed in an Airbnb. It was terrific. It's somebody's private apartment we stayed in. My son and I went in there and, and not only was it great and, and much more reasonable than a hotel, man, I was part of the community. The woman who owns it, manages the thing and everything. I mean, she was like a buddy. I mean, she hooked us up with people in the area. You, you feel like you're part of the community, not have to go to the fancy concierge at the hotel lobby telling you about something that he's getting a 10% kickback on or something like that. <laughs> and it was just a wonderful experience that way. So now this is happening all over again. This company, Airbnb, is worth I, I forget, tens of billions of dollars already. It's actually worth more than even Hyatt Hotel. And this company has like a thousand people working for it. Hyatt Hotel has 50,000 people working for it because this company owns nothing. It owns a website. See, the rooms are you. You have an extra room you're not using. Actually, even a couch you're not using. You could put it on there. How many people like it? And see, people are, are connecting with people more this way. People say, oh, the internet is getting us a remote and you know, we don't have bowling leagues anymore. But, but man, if I'm going to China and staying in someone's home you know, and meeting someone who lives there, I mean, to me, that's a more personal relationship than staying at the Hilton. You know, so that's why I think we're getting more personal. 
you know, with that. And it's a way to get more personal and get more connection. Now I have more friends in Shanghai than I probably do here. <laughs> and I've been living here 70 years. So, uh, but that's what's happening. And this is so big. I mean, this company it just took off. They just went public and they own nothing. New York is complaining because all the hotels aren't are losing business and you don't have to pay you know the the hotel tax <coughs> so the local governments are worried so we'll shake that out but it's not going anywhere i mean just like when we started downloading cds or music on, online all the big music companies were complaining and everything and we straightened it out and and the music stores are still gone no matter how much they fight <laughs> they'll just go down and fight and, and the same way the hotels and things like that it's a good deal for the consumer and it's a good deal for you if you have an extra room you have an extra apartment or whatever or even uh, anything like that now here's another place like that called evergreen club uh, and where you could stay for $25 a day for two people anywhere. There's like 2,000 places around the country. And it's really for seniors. It's people over 50 or so. And, and you stay with them. They feed you in the morning. And it's sort of like a, a friendly place. I mean, I, 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 I get that now for some reason. Coming back from Shanghai, where uh, getting local people involved and you meet with them for an hour at breakfast in the morning. And, and it's just a wonderful experience instead of being at the hotel coffee shop, you know, with 50 other traveling salesmen or whatever the hell it is. You, know? and you got some local person and you're staying at a fraction of the price. And actually the Airbnb, we're using it. Uh, we have an apartment downtown Washington we don't use a lot. So we just put it on Airbnb to do it. You know, to see we make some extra money. My son who has a uh, a townhouse in Washington, D.C., there were way so many weekends he'd go away. He rents it out just on the weekends and makes extra money, you know, when he's out of town. So that's, I mean, this kind of extra money you can always make now because somebody is doing all the hard work for you. There's a, um, you know, a website that handles all the money, handles all the transactions, all the legal stuff insurance you know and customers they find you customers that's the hardest part of anything is finding a customer no matter what you have business you have you have the greatest idea you have you don't have a customer you're peanuts you know you're nothing nada <laughs> so they get the customers for you and that's the key to success with all these kind of things that are going on that they bring you customers and you it costs you nothing to put it on that website and try it what the heck people are making so much money doing this kind of stuff. Now, here's another interesting way to make money with this is manage other people's properties that on Airbnb. I ran into a guy, he sort of like invests in condos around the city, but when they're empty, he gives them this other fella who, who takes 20% of the, uh, the money they get and he puts on Airbnb. He handles all the stuff to make sure the people get the keys, you know, and, and updates the site, you know, and things like that, or give the information on the site. You don't have to be a techie to do this. And what's neat, they send out a photographer for, for, for free to your apartment and take beautiful pictures. Go on and look at our place. <laughs> yeah. The gorgeous looking pictures, a little better than the actual plays, but they make you look gorgeous. Uh, uh, the camera work is wonderful. And, and But it's a, that's a wonderful business. You can make a great living just renting other people's properties on Airbnb, you know, and take the people have money and property and some of them are too lazy to do all the little picky own things and they don't need, you know, living money or anything like that. So it's just extra money from them. So you could go and, hey, I'll do all the work and you're going to get extra money. What a deal. See, that's why the new opportunities that are ha happening that people don't know about because they're not yeah, they're advertised. It's not normal. Everybody, you know, if, if you're an older person, the, the worse you are at knowing about these things because you're getting life you by, you think, very well in life without knowing. And you think life is just fine that way. A little tough, but so that's why if you know about these new things, you don't have to worry about it that as much. Okay, now here's another neat kind of thing that's money sitting in your house is peer-to-peer -peer fashion. <laughs> 
Who would have thought? <laughs> but I'm looking at these sites and I can't find any question mark suits. But really what it is, is a way of money. You could go up to your closet and you know there's stuff you haven't used. I know, I got a lot of stuff I haven't used in a long time. My wife just giggled in the next room. <laughs> and, 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 and you could pack, they send you a box and you send it to these places. They're gonna sell it for you and they give you the money. Yeah, actually, some of them even give you the money ahead of time. I mean, Tradesy, T-R-A-D-E-S-Y dot com is one. Thread Flip, T-H-R-E-A-D-F-L-I-P is another one. Like Twice, that's cute, huh? <laughs> that's another one. So that's way, number one, to buy, you know, high-end items or normal items for, for you know, at, at good discounts, but more so have a way to get rid of the stuff that you don't need instead of going to a local thrift store. Because some of these will even pay you ahead of time. And you know, where they sell mine, because they know they'll sell them. That's why when you have enough volume, a local thrift store, I mean, how much stuff can they handle, you know? So that's why they're so picky. Here, they're doing with millions of people on the web, on the internet, all over the world. And they just pack it up and ship it or whatever. And they send you boxes to ship it and make it easy. So you, you got money sitting in your closet that you don't even know about it. And after I was reading these, I, <laughs> I know for sure I do it. I should get some of these. So that's three of these. Now here's another thing that not only you're a, uh, you know, your couch, you know, somebody could sleep in for a night or extra room or whatever you can. How about your garage you're not using? Your closet space you're not using? Your basement you're not using? There's a, a site called Roost, like, <laughs> I guess, uh, Chicken Roost or something like that, Rooster, you yeah. uh, Roost, that you can make extra income. Somebody wants to store stuff. Hey, yeah, I'll make room for me. You, you're gonna give me 20 bucks a week or something to store something? <laughs> it's, it's nothing for me. And I do that 10 times, that's a nice little income, you know? So that's, who would ever thought of these things? That's the problem. See, why wear these question marks? Up? You don't know the questions to ask. You know, how would you think of that? Well, I bet I like to rent out my basement, you know, not to somebody who lives, just to store stuff. Look at all the store stuff. You know, storage of uh, places that are out there. You know, people are paying hundreds of dollars a month or whatever to store things. Well, if you have room in your house, see the problem, we never thought about that before because we could, didn't know how to find the people who wanted the store. So now you have a clearinghouse, roost.com, that people are looking, hey, where can I find an inexpensive place instead of, you know, giving it to this guy who had a, buy the real estate, you know, build the, the places to store stuff and charge you a lot of money to do it. You could do it for a fraction of the price, you know, and it all goes into your pocket, right? But your problem is you can't find a customer. And that's what's so neat. These websites get you the customers, you know, and, and it's wonderful. That's why you have to learn the new ways of living nowadays. I mean, if, you have, <laughs> if you're not savvy to this, you won't know. And it'll take you, you'll be the last one to know. And that's right, the last one to buy a PC. You're the last one to get on the internet. But now it's the last one. You don't be the last one to use these new tools of making money or, or being more efficient with your life. You know? Well, here's another need, dog vacay. You like animals? You like pets? You can make money out of your home, okay? <laughs> because again, there's one of these websites looking for, like, not kennels, but people who care about animals. I mean, the kennel people say they do, but what, they're pushing, you know, 50 dogs in a little room for the night, you know? No, you're gonna take care of them, you know? Because you don't have 50 dogs, you take one or two, you know? And that's it. And, and you'll care for them because you're a dog lover or whatever, and you're making money doing it. And the person who's giving you the dog knows, I mean, they see the house, it's a friendly house or whatever, or apartment, or whatever it is. I mean, it's not some kennel that looks like a jail, <laughs> a dog jail, <laughs> no matter how much they try to make it look nice, you know, it's not. So that's a cool way to making extra money. And that's dog vacay uh, or pet vacay. It goes by two names and, and, and it's there. So who would ever think of that? You know, but it is there. And that's why some people on those sites don't have kennels. They don't have anything. They're just putting people together. And that's the business. Nobody would have thought of that business 10 years ago, five years ago even. Okay, here's another neat thing that the government will help you out. You cook something. You think it's great, okay? Uh, 
there's an office that the Department of Agriculture will show you how to start a business in your kitchen, right? You can make 400 bucks a week cooking your, you know, banana bread or whatever the heck you like. They help you market it or what the sources are for that. They'll take you cradle to grave on making a business out of your kitchen. You worry about the regulations, they'll do that. You think you need money to do it, they help you do a business plan to do that. All this, you think you could sell it at farmer's markets, they know where they are and help you do that. And that's part of the County Cooperative Extension Service. And if you Google County Cooperative Extension offices, you'll see a map, part of the U.S. Department of Agriculture, uh, County Cooperative Extension offices. There'll be a map, you click on your state, and you'll find one near you. And that's making a kitchen. Anybody likes to work with food? A lot of people do. I see a lot of heavy people around. <laughs> so a lot of people like food in this country. Or if you want to make money in your backyard, growing fruit, growing fresh fruit, vegetables or whatever. That's a booming industry, you know, and, and you can do it in your backyard. You don't need a lot of room to do that. And actually that same office, the County Cooperative Extension Service has special people on their staff to help you do that. They want you to do that. You know, that's why the government has, there's even grants for that. You know, if you live in a part of the world where it, it, it or America, whatever, where, you know, it, it, you only have a short growing season, six months, they, they have grants to get you like these things like tents you put over your vegetables, you know, to get another month or two of growing season out of your, your crop or whatever. And that, you don't need 10,000 acres, you know, you can have just a big backyard and, and, and start this thing. Uh, people are doing it in their front yard because they don't want to cut their lawn anymore. <laughs> you make money with it instead of paying somebody to cut your lawn. So that's neat. So in your kitchen or, or your backyard, um, and people make up like $10,000 extra a year, just saying you get fresh food and vegetables. So you don't have to buy it at the grocery store anymore. And that's the County Cooperative Extension Service. If you haven't heard about crowdfunding, you have to. <laughs> you have to know about this. I mean, it is one of the coolest things that's happening on the internet. It's a place where you can get money, particularly any kind of little business you want to start. It doesn't take any money at all. You know, uh, you go online, you need no money, you need no product, you need no experience. <laughs> There's no credit check. Nothing, uh, you know, it's better than a grant because people, potential customers who think your idea is pretty neat, you know, and so I, they say, hey, I think you got a neat idea here, you know, and I'll give you, I, you know, money, say maybe you need 10 grand to make a hundred of these or whatever it is and to start your little business. Yeah, I'll buy one of those. Here's to, you know, here's my hundred bucks up front or $10 up front to help you start it. Now, if you get the whole 10 grand, then you go make it and you send them one. If you don't, everybody gets their money back. But it's a wonderful place to see if your idea is worth anything. So if you think you have a great idea or product or whatever, and you can make money out of doing it, this is the place to test it. Because it, it's the metal meets the road. You don't have to ask your mother-in-law, hey, you think this is a good idea? Or your friends, they're never gonna buy it anyway. You know? So real true customers, because millions and millions of people are coming to these websites looking for new ideas and things that they think are cool. And your idea may be cool you know, and, and, and be invested. And about half or more of the people that put ideas on there, get them funded, get the money you need. Now that's incredible. That's more than people going on the, uh, getting a grant, that's a bigger success rate. <laughs> yeah. So that's why this is wonderful. And it takes no credentials, remember, no credit check. You, know, you don't even have to have the full product, maybe just a sample, what it's going to look like, you know, kind of thing. And, and people are, are going to invest in your dream too. Now, what can be better than that? And it's not one person, not some fat cat. Sure, you could go out there and do it in the traditional sense, but you're going to talk to a big company, right? Who, who some fat cat with a cigar. No, I don't think it's going to sell, my boy. You know, take a walk. You know, they don't know. They're just guessing. And then you come to them because they have money, not because they're smart. <laughs> they just happen to have money. Yeah. So the only smart people are the people who are going to really buy the thing. So you could find out that ahead of time. You put it on one of these sites and you say, hey, would you buy this thing if I make it? Yeah, enough people say yes. 
And then you go Megan. You know, ah, what would be better than that? You cut out all these partners, all the middlemen, all the venture capitalists, all the banks, everybody. All those people who want your, your soul. <laughs> and, and you're going and making money and doing what you want to do in life. Now look, and, and the greatest thing about this is the downside. There is none. You don't lose anything. You lose some time or whatever, but you gained it in knowledge about what to do next time. So it's sort of like playing a football game or whatever and you lost the game. Well, you learn from that loot. Hey, you know, I didn't think of this and do that or whatever. And it's a wonderful opportunity to learn. Better than go to school. Why pay some school, you know, uh, money to, to learn something when you could go someplace like this <laughs> and get the education for free and it's real life education. <laughs> because now you know exactly what to do. Not some professor who's never done it themselves. <laughs> You're doing it yourself and you got real life experience. And that's the way to live. You know what I just learned in a minute ago? Clashy is just one letter off from classy. You know, someone just mentioned to me that my jacket clashes with the, my sweater and the tablecloth. But the sweater and tablecloth match, don't they? <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, now here's another way to make money. We all have credit card debt. Now there's a good way to make money on your credit card debt. Your credit card debt, you know, they charge out crazy interest rates. Now there's ways to get money cheaper than a bank or anybody else will give you, and particularly a credit card company, to pay off your credit card debt like that and make thousands of dollars doing it. Because if you pay off your normal credit card debt, like if you have a big credit card debt, you know, uh, uh, it could cost you an extra $10,000, you know, paying it their way. If you go to one of these peer-to-peer -peer lending sites, remember we talked about peer-to-peer -peer fashion, peer-to-peer -peer automobiles, <laughs> now there's peer-to-peer -peer money. These are sites where people are not putting their money in the bank because the bank gives them only 1% interest on their money. No, they go to a peer-to-peer -peer lending site that gives them like, you know, six, 7% money because they're lending it to you at only eight or 9%, you know, compared to 20%, <laughs> that the credit card companies giving you money for. So doesn't it make sense, you know, to get this money now and pay somebody at seven, eight, nine percent versus twenty percent to the credit card company and get them off your bank back right away forever. See what a way to make money. What a way to solve that problem. And the two big ones are Prosper and Lending Club. Prosper and Lending Club. You know, and gosh, I mean, they just. Uh, our, our public comp, one of them is now done publicly, uh, public health, is the new banking system. Why give all that money to the middleman who, who has all these executives making all this money when these people, all they have is a website. And so the, the, the instead of paying for overhead of fat cats, all you're paying is the person <laughs> who's lending the money <laughs> and the person loaning the money gets a better deal. Yeah. And a better deal, particularly when you own some money somewhere else, to pay that big bill off so you're saving money. And so I'm just thinking if you save you know, $10,000 next month, next year on your credit card bill, that's like getting a raise for $10,000. Know, and you're probably not going to get that <laughs> at your current job. Now here's another interesting website uh, that I just so shocked. I talked to the guy years ago, and not years ago, uh, maybe eight, nine months ago called Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. It's for artists. You have a skill, you have an art, you like making doilies, you know, you like painting, you like crafts or anything like that. Sure, you can go on SD or whatever and sell your items. Oh, I should have that in the list, shouldn't I, SD. Uh, but here you could go where people like your art so much, they just give you money every month. They'll kick in 20 bucks, hundred bucks a month or whatever, just to keep you going because they realize the importance of art in our culture. And the federal government doesn't do it as much anymore, so they want you to keep going. So I, I talked to the fellow doing this a couple months back and, and he was a delightful fellow and I said, well, this is awfully nice. And I thought, well, it would be cute. I just wonder how big it get. I checked it out yesterday. They do a million dollars a month. A million dollars a month the artists are getting from this one website every month. <laughs> so that's $12 million a year is going to artists who just, they don't even send work to the people. It's just to support artists doing their work. <laughs> now how great is that? 
Who would have thought that if you go with your hat in your hand to the National Endowment of the Arts and try to apply for a grant and all that, I mean, God, it, it, this is so much easier. And it looks like it's even bigger. Mom, that's incredible. And any kind of art, you know, that's what's so incredible to me. A million dollars a month. Check that out. Again, costs nothing to try it. You're an artist. You're an artist that cuts hair or something. Who cares what it is? Art is art. It's in the eyes of the beholder, right? You put your, your talent or whatever there and you just say how to, you know, learn the system. It's learning a system. Just like if you had to learn to be a grant writer. Well, you don't have to learn to be a grant writer anymore. <laughs> you have to be, you know, how to use the internet, you know, and, and it's there for anybody. You don't have to be a high techie to do it anymore. At one time you did, but not anymore. Now, because they want to make it so easy. If millions and millions and millions of people are using it now, that means it's not just for the elite or the, the techies or whatever. So that's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. Okay, so that's, uh, I think, an incredible thing that's going on on the internet. Here's another thing. Reduce your student loan debt. Everybody's got student loan debt, right? And, and so if times are tough, you could get that reduced and don't go on the internet looking for people to help you do that. No, there's federal programs and definitely do not, and there's a lot of banks trying to tell you, and they're just ripping you off with money. It's gonna cost you money to do the same thing that, that you could get for free. So don't, you go, and, and because what you can do now is reduce your payments down that it's only 10% of your income. So if you're in tight times and you had a big consumer debt, so now they'll get it down only 10% of your income. And if you don't pay it off, like in 20 years, they'll forgive it. And if you're really tough, they could stop your payments too. And there's 5 million people that are eligible for this. Yeah. So you want to check it out. Uh, and remember, don't, <laughs> don't in get involved with any company on the internet. You want to go to consumerfinance.gov, consumerfinance.gov. And then you search within there for repay student debt. So that's consumerfinance.gov, repay consu uh, student debt. And you'll come and explain how to do it. You use those sources there. Do not, if you get screwed up, call 211, and that's an information hotline for government programs, and tell them you're looking for the program that helps you uh, with the student debt. Do not <laughs> go to a company uh, or anybody in the financial industry to help you with student debt. Um, okay, now here's another. This is an incredible deal. You may have heard about it because the company is in the news now for other things besides what they're doing. And what they do is they show you how to make $100,000 with your car. That's right. If you have a car, it has to be a fairly new car, a couple of years old or whatever, that you can make up to $90,000, like a taxi, but it's not a taxi. Because again, like, like Airbnb, where they vet people, they make sure the people, you know, who's going to get into your car are registered. You, they don't, you don't even take money because it's all done for the credit card. People in this town are making, and this is what I live in Washington, D.C., $40,000 a year part-time while they have a full-time government job. Wow. And here's the other thing, too. If you don't have a new or enough car, they help you buy a car. Because they know you're going to get so much money from this <laughs> to pay off your loan <laughs> for your car. And they give you a deal on the loan. So they're looking for like 100,000 people right now to buy cars for them, to help them buy cars, to work for them. I mean, this is a growing business. Cab companies hate them. A lot of local you know, uh, governments hate them because they're not paying taxes. They're buying medallions. Remember those medallions you had to buy like in New York? They're worth like millions of dollars to be official taxi. Well, no, there's no official taxi because anybody can do it now. You know? and, and, you know, and all this company has, again, is a website. You know, and you get an iPhone. They help you get a phone too if you don't have the right kind of phone. And you just, you see something, you want to work? I don't want to work. Maybe I do. It's up to you when you want to work. You work for a taxi company. They want you, oh, you got to put in your 12, 15 hours today or whatever. And that's it. No, you do it when you want to do it. That's what's so neat. It's all about you having control of your life. And same way in your 
in your work. You know, how many of us have really control in life work? No, not when you're working with somebody that doesn't. So these, imagine you can make up to $90,000 and have control your life. I mean, that's phenomenal. That's what I mean. There's about new ways of doing everything. And it's not only uber.com. There's two other companies like this one called sidecar and don't put sidecar. It's funny how they have it. It's S I D E dot C R not C A R. C R. So S I D E, then not dot com, but dot C R. And the other company is Lyft, L Y F T dot com. They're the people with the pink mustaches on the front of the car. <laughs> they're a little weird. Uh, but no, they're, they're, they're a competitor. And they, they all do. I know people work for both sometimes. Yeah. And that's easy to do too. So that's why I mean, these are all the new kind of businesses that you're not going to see in classified ads. You're not going to see it in the normal stuff because there's no middleman making something. It's between you, you know, and, and the person looking for a ride and the guy with the website. That's all he's doing. But again, like Uber, they're worth billions or whatever it is already. And all they have is a website. I know millions of employees. That's why, see, we, we're not going to create the same kind of old kind of job where you hire a factory, you know, like these companies are, are the value of them on Wall Street is as big as Boeing aircraft, you know, that hires, you know, tens of thousands of employees. And these have next to nothing but of the same value. This is where the value is coming in our economy. Uh, right or wrong, I don't know, but this is where it's going. And that's why it's people have to know about it to take advantage of it. Now, here's another thing. Just Park. J-U-S-T-P-A-R-K.com. <laughs> people park in your parking lot, your garage, in front of your house or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and you can make a, some of these people make up to $4,000. Just people parking there. Yeah. Whatever, because you're not using it. So many of us don't use it, you know, and, and you can get money by doing it. See, that's what I mean. The stuff around your house you didn't even know that was there, you can get money for. You know, with your clothes, your, <laughs> you know, your garage, or even the front of your house nobody's using, you could do it. Well, here's another neat one like that, part of the peer to peer, is boats. How many boats do you see sitting going nowhere, right? If you have one, you know how expensive that is, right? Sitting there, how many times do you use it? Well, now there's something called boatbound.com, B-O-U-N-D, where you put it there. People want a boat for a day. I don't want to buy a boat and, you know, take care of it for the rest of my life. No, I want to use it <laughs> a few times a year. So I'll go on this website and I looked in DC, man, there's hundreds and hundreds of boats, everything you want from a canoe to a luxury liner. <laughs> I can rent by the hour for a party or whatever. Yeah. So if you have a boat and just don't let it sit there and you complain about it, you know, make money out of it like that. Now here's another way to make money out of it too. What you can do is find people with boats and you put them on the site for them and make a commission. You know, you know where, I mean, if you're near water, just go down the docks and see with boats, find the owner, say, hey, I'm going to put them on this website for you. And I'll, I'll take 20% of what we get. You know, yeah, they, again, people have money, they, they, they don't have time and they're lazy and they don't need the money to eat. So it's just extra money. So you're going to go to them and f show them how to make some extra money and they have to do nothing, nothing, because you're going to do it all. In. So you're the boss of this company that <laughs> rents other people's boats for them and it costs you nothing because you have no investment. You don't even need a website because the website is already there for the boats. <laughs> you're just getting the information from the guy, put it in the website for him and making sure it all works right, right? See, there's lots of new ways to make money <laughs> and, and it's all because of the internet. Now, here's the one last thing that is really interesting to me. It's called Go Halfsies. <laughs> Maybe you're like me, you just bought a, a nice pair of golf clubs and you barely use them. You could put them on this website and somebody will go halfsies for you. Okay, I'll give you paid five hundred dollars. Here's two hundred dollars, and I'll use them. You know, whatever, half the time or ten times a year. You have a vacation home. Ah, oh, you paid so much. Yeah, you go half see Somebody else wants it. Doesn't want to go through the uh, the trouble of going and looking for what they go half sees with you. You know, uh, they they do it for skis. I mean, just how many times do you use a pair of skis? You know, uh, uh, condos, luxury goods. You go on this website, you see watches, everything that go, people are going half sees for. 
<laughs> you're shocked so it's another way to get stuff money from you uh, from the stuff you have already and not give it up and not only rent it but you go half seas so that's g-o-h-a-l-f-s-y dot com go in half seas and I think I said in the beginning that's 33 items, and it's really only 32 because I like the number 33, and I thought it would be a nicer headline to say 33 new ways <laughs> to make money on the internet. 32 didn't sound as exciting, so I lied. So that's my 33. <laughs>